This is Hidden Treasures with Paul Winters for the digitalfeed.com here at the National Transport Museum out in Holt. Come in and have a look. I'm here with Liam Kelly, uh, who is... Uh, well, what are you with the National Transport I'm Museum? I'm just a member of the committee. I'm just one of a group of people oh, who right. looks after it here. But you were here from the inception. Uh, from the inception of Holt, yes, I was here in 1986. But the society goes back to 1948, when trams were... Uh, the tram system in Dublin was being discontinued, and the people... There was no official... A body wanted to preserve trams or save them and uh, the society was more or less formed to save trams and then they continued on to save other items of commercial value buses lorries fire engines anything else nobody else was doing it here anyway so oh, okay and how many exhibits have you got here here in Holt we have approximately 60 it varies a little from time to time but we have a, almost 200 vehicles in total some in not great condition stored away. This is the Hill of Hope tram that's in uh, restoration at the moment. Well the body has been fully restored but the, ch the bogies are now getting restored and they shortly be finished and it'll be they'll be rolled back under it and hopefully it'll be complete then ready for whenever electric curtain is connected to it. Oh right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the hope anyway. Yeah, we all uh, be but it'll be probably a long time before that happens. And so how long did it take him to get to this It took stage? approximately 13 years at weekends. Right. Uh, so it was a very, very big job. And there was some specialist work done. Naturally, he couldn't do everything himself. Some specialist work had to be done. But the majority of it, Jim did himself, you know. And uh, it's a good credit to him. It is. It's a lovely thing. Yeah. Now, this one here, the yeah. driver was... Got uh, some shelter from the rain, did it? Yeah, this is a later, this is a later Dublin tram, tram 253, which was one of the last trams to run in Dublin. It was r probably run, running on the last night of trams in 1949. And uh, it's, um, it, was res it wasn't too bad. It, the body of it was uh, sold off and it was in a convent out in Black Rock. And it was used for some purpose out there, sewing classes or something in the summer. <laughs> And then they were finished with it, and the nuns donated it to us. And it was restored under a FOSS project. It was the first grant we ever got for restoration, and we got it from the Department of Heritage at the time. And uh, we got it completed under a FOSS project. It took almost two years to do, right. but uh, it was a quicker job that way. Uh, other, th other things that you have, other than buses and trams, is fire engines. Yeah. Every little boy's dreams. Of course, yeah. Say, Most popular thing here. Is it, yeah? Along with military, I think, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So talk us through um, this fire engine here. And yeah. About well, this fire engine actually was originally in England. It was in, a, I can't remember who it was with, but uh, it's a, it, it's a Merriweather um, on a Dennis, a Dennis, sorry, it's a Dennis chassis. And it has a petrol engine, six-cylinder petrol engine. It's 1939, and it's very typical of the open type fire engine of the period. It, it's a ladder and a wheel escape. Okay. On this on this particular one, yeah. And what it, speeds would it achieve? Then? Oh, they'd they'd be fairly fast. I'd say you get up to 60 miles an hour of those. You know right. whether they were supposed to do that or not, I don't know. <laughs> but the, the engine would be it was very these p petrol engines were very fast, you know, and quick, you know. Right. Mo mostly, but pets. Only in latter years they'd gone over to diesel engines because they wanted fast engines. So they stuck with petrols for fire engines for a long, long time. You know. Okay. And, uh, sorry, they of course had the manual bell. The guy had to ring the bell by hand. The, the <laughs> they hadn't anything like. That. Get out <laughs> the way! Get out the yeah. way! Well, very <laughs> Shout at the top of your voice. But that's why they're <laughs> so popular with children, I think. You know. Yeah, because the, uh, there's no water tank on these or anything like that, is no, there? No, not on, on this that particular one, no. They right. would have other ones for that with tanks on them, you know. Okay, so we have fire engines, we have buses and trams, and then other things that you have, I know you have lots of like trucks and uh, like wheelbarrows, this kind of Guinness stuff and all that, but the other thing that every boy loves is military stuff. That's right, yeah. Uh, 
So this lad This here. one here is a, is a gun tractor, an artillery tractor. Uh, it's Irish Army, 1939, used to tow anti-aircraft guns and field guns. And uh, it's a Morris Commercial, made by Morris, Morris Commercial. Has a double axle at the back, so it's a three axle vehicle. A petrol engine, of course, as they mostly were in those days. And uh, it's one of the favourites with the children, pr along with the two armoured cars down at the back. Right. The Landsberg right. and the Unimog. Okay. And the one outside, of course, the Timony, which is the Irish built armoured car. Okay, uh, now, um, the uh, progression from trousers into buses, and then we had the driver sitting over the engine on buses, and then we moved to where the driver is fully enclosed, and people can then get up and pay the driver direct. And that's where this bus came in, isn't it? Yeah, the well, just before this one came, you had single deckers, and they had moved the engine under the floor. Right. And then later to the rear. And the double deckers followed then, and they moved the engine to the rear, same as this one. And that, of course, gave more space up front, and the driver, the people could get in at the front, and they could also make a one-man operation out of it, because they, they could set it up there for the driver to collect the money as well. And yeah. that's the way it still is to this day. To this day, yeah. It yeah. means you don't get conductors, which I used you to like. You don't have no. conductors no. now, no. The conductors are gone. They were very... The conductors were the, the, the lifeline, really. People knew the conductors and they knew the passengers yeah. and that. But um, it's, it's gone. It's not there anymore. It was particularly on the country buses, the conductors were... And driver were a great team because they used to have to lift the bikes and the stuff onto the roofs and all that. And they were part of the part of the fabric of it really part of the fabric it? of yeah. society yeah. yeah exactly it's a shame now that, that oh. and now you've got the glass panel now you can't even talk to the driver well that's that's another thing yeah, yeah. yeah. all right this one is from 1883 that's and right it's a really it's a horse-drawn fire yeah contraption i'll call it fire contraption, pump. Will yeah. I? yeah fire pump yeah yeah horse-drawn fire pump yeah uh, and so how would it work now well these uh, levers here they hinge out and each side, and there would be six people pumping up and down each and side. Just pull them out. But they wouldn't know? work. Yeah, you can yeah, right. pull them. Should there. I pull them out? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, so they come out. Yeah. And then. And, and to be the people, there'd be six six guys this side and six guys the other side, and they pump away, and that's where the power came from. Right. Okay. Oh. <sighs> and this is from Moore Abbey. Monster Evan, is yeah, it? it was in Moor Abbey originally, apparently, and it then it went into the um, Murphy's Brewery that was originally in Monster Evan. The building is still there. Yeah, um, it's been abandoned as a brewery for since I don't know when the twenties or something, and then it was there was some some apartments built in it. Oh, I know the building. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, a distillery or a no, distillery, I think, and there's a brewery on the far side of the road, which is still abandoned in Monstrevan, as far as I know. Yeah, I know, th I know the place. Yeah, yeah. You, you get uh, I'm digressing now, but it's a different part of. I know what it's like when you go through that bit. You yeah. don't see Monstrevan; no. you just assume it's like that. But the guys, the firemen, would run alongside. Yeah, that's the good. Yeah, or maybe they'd follow in another cart or something. They relied on horses in those days, you know. So there'll be a pipe running into the river. It's all been very interesting, the National Transport Museum. But tell me, what's the future? Well, the future depends on volunteers. We 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 no running support. We have we have to find the overheads to run the museum, which is very very difficult. It's the overheads are increasing all the time. Insurance, power, everything like that, and. There's no grants or anything available. We've never got one that to run it. We have got grants to do restorations, and that's fine. But uh, to display them and show them to the public is the, is the big problem for us. We're, we're willing to volunteer. We've plenty of willing volunteers, but we don't just have the funding. And all our, the money we raise, the, the subscriptions at the door, and any other money we raise, it virtually all goes, almost all goes, on <coughs> on uh, running the place just to keep it open some local money was raised by uh, people in businesses in Holt um, 
the King Citric Hotel and the Chamber of Commerce, which is do, is used exclusively for the for the restoration of trams. It was it was donated for the Hill of Hope tram, and it's still, as you know, that's still being restored with the bogies. So that money is kind of kept separate, and uh, but apart from that, we've very little money for restoration. So can people volunteer? How do they go about volunteering? <coughs> Generally speaking, they they turn up here and talk to somebody and okay. develop it from there. Some people don't really take to it and others do, you know, it's right. it's, it's hard to say. <laughs> well, it is a passion. It is a passion, it's exactly. A love thing, and some people are more dedicated than others. Yeah. Well, thanks very much, Liam. It's been extraordinarily in interesting, hasn't it, Dave? Yeah, he, he's nodding. He's nodding. <laughs> I can see. He's nodding, isn't he? He's nodding, yeah. Right. And uh, hopefully it's here for years to come. That's what I'd like to say. I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> I, absolutely. I hope so. I hope be here to be long after me, I hope. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it will. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Bye now.